But I was terrified about that first date because there's so many things you've got to worry about when you go on the date. How was I going to impress her? What was I going to wear? How was I going to dress to impress? You know, do I wear my glasses? Do I wear my contact lenses? You know, do I compromise? One contact lens on a monocle. Done it before. <laughs> No, you've got to look impressive on the date. How do you do that? I used to spray paint cheating bastard across the front of my house, make it look as if I've dated multiple women, but... <laughs> I got so excited about that date, but I bought stuff to wear specifically on the date, and I got so excited when I bought the stuff, I wore it out the shop. I've never done that before in my life, but you get judgmental looks when you do it, and it's like, why? I bought those things. They belong to me. They're my condoms. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> Now, on the actual day of the date itself, I tried to pluck up my courage. I walked over to her flat, knocked on her doorbell, which isn't how doorbells work. She answered the door. <laughs> and immediately, I felt like I blew it because I said hello. Because no one says hello in the modern era. It's too formal. And people have a habit of doing that on dates. You're trying to present the best version of yourself, but you end up coming across as so stilted and reserved that you practically resort to office speak. And I've done that before on dates. I once asked a girl on a date, tell me when you've worked well as part of a team. We've all done it, you know, but... <laughs> But hello, no one says hello, you say hi, hey, good evening, how's it going, you know? There's only three occasions in life when people still say hello, and that's when you've picked up the phone, um, when you've just entered a spooky mansion, <laughs> or, uh, or when you've just inhaled helium. Those are the only times... <laughs> We had such a wonderful date together. After a while, it became apparent that the date was going to go one step further, and I was terrified about that. Not because I wasn't ready to have sex. I was thinking, you know, of course I'm ready to have sex. You know, that prophylactic's been on since I left Matalan, but I didn't want to <laughs> spoil the date. I won't go into the details, but, you know, one thing led to another. We slept together. It was as stilted and formal as I worried it would be. It was probably the only time I've ever had to be reminded during sex that actually we are a shoes-off house. <laughs> We had a wonderful time. We won't go into the details. We, we, you know, we did a favourite position, her on top, um, and, uh, and, and me on top. It's how bump beds work, but it was... It was, it was... <laughs> and afterwards, I was so happy. I was just lying there naked as the day I'd graduated, just feeling so blissfully happy. <laughs> as we fell asleep together, I could feel her breath on my shins. <laughs> it's a perfect relationship. Worst thing about the breakup was the day of the breakup itself. She did that thing, I don't know if you've ever had a partner or a spouse or a housemate who does a thing where they, they ask you if you've done a household chore that they know you have not done. <laughs> Just so that you have to look them in the eyes and go, I have failed you. <laughs> she asked me if I'd remember to do the washing up. And she knew. Like, she knew the answer was no. Like, we were stood in the kitchen with the sink <laughs> betwixt us. And I was eating cornflakes out of a vase. <laughs>